In this video I will be counting down the top 5 cult fan favourite characters who have appeared in the Walking Dead TV show. Now what I mean by the term cult favourite character is someone who you wouldn't normally associate with being a huge hit with the fanbase, but for some reason or another they end up having quite a significant loyal following. There will be spoilers relating to the characters mentioned throughout this video, so please don't watch if you aren't up to date with the show. So without further ado, let's begin. I would be willing to forgive even the most hardcore Walking Dead fans if they were to forget who exactly Daniel was. As a member of the Kingdom's Guard, he very rarely actually had any dialogue and wasn't really seen interacting with many of the main cast at all. However, as the first member of the Kingdom to come into contact with Rick's group, the role he played was actually pretty important, because if he didn't come into contact with Morgan in the first place, you could make the argument that Rick wouldn't have gone on to be introduced to Ezekiel, meaning the two may have never become allies. Truth be told though, this isn't really the reason why fans have taken a shine to him, rather the reason being is that the actor behind the character seems to have become a bit of a cult favourite due to his love of the role and how he interacts with fans of The Walking Dead. If you go into the actor's Twitter account, you can see how popular he really is. He has a very healthy 1 million followers, which compared to other bits part Walking Dead actors really is pretty impressive. Sure, you could attribute this to the fact that he does follow around 775,000 people, meaning a lot of his followers are probably just people who follow him back. However, a lot of the users he does follow are Walking Dead fans, and it's evident from many of the tweets on his page how elated this really makes them feel. Of course, there will be people who argue that being followed by an actor doesn't really mean anything at all, but for some fans this relatively small act can really make their day. He also seems to frequently reply to Walking Dead fans, which has only endeared himself to them even more. Even though Daniel Newman's role on the show has been a relatively small one, he does seem to have a much bigger active fan base than a lot more well known cast members who have featured on the program, which is why he kicks this list off. Although the character of Jerry has had a larger role to play than the previously mentioned Daniel, when compared to the likes of Rick and Daryl, he is still in the minor leagues. But this hasn't stopped people from jumping on the Jerry train, and he's become a very popular late addition to the show. In fact, I actually quite like the guy myself, despite him not really doing an awful lot. When he was first introduced, however, I'll admit I was a bit worried about his character. Seeing him deliver some very bad jokes alongside King Ezekiel, the episode after Glenn and Abe were killed, felt tonally very out of place, and for me the jokes just didn't land. However, as time went on, I warmed up to his character. He's just got this very likeable aura about him, if that makes any sense. And come on, the dude walks around with a battle axe, how can you not like him? I also find his sense of dedication to his King Ezekiel to be an admirable quality, with this being wonderfully presented during this season's episode, Some Guy. Even when Ezekiel was ready to give up and having a major crisis of confidence, Jerry stood by him and helped him escape the messy situation the pair found themselves in. Speaking of messy situations, Jerry also found himself captured by the saviours during the season 8 episode How It's Gotta Be, with Simon putting a gun to his head if Maggie refused to do as he said. Now if instead of Jerry the person being held hostage was just another random member of the kingdom's army, honestly I don't think I would have batted an eyelid. However because it was Jerry, I actually found myself being a bit nervous as I didn't want him to die. Overall, I like what I've seen of his character so far, and if he does manage to survive the All Out War saga, hopefully he will get more screen time than he has currently. When a character is written out of The Walking Dead, you can guarantee that 99% of the time they are going to be killed off, and usually in a pretty brutal fashion. Morales was the exception to this rule, well, that was until his return this season, but I'll get onto that later. Introduced during the first season of the show, Morales was part of the short-lived Atlanta group which included memorable characters such as uh, Jackie, Amy and this guy. Alright, okay, so a lot of the show's early characters weren't that great and were just cannon fodder, however Morales bucked this trend by simply deciding to leave Rick's group and head off on his own path after Mr. Grimes decided he wanted to head to the CDC. With Morales deciding to leave the show, a core set of fans rallied around the idea of wondering what actually happened to him and his family. There's countless articles and fan posts from years previous debating whether or not he would ever show up again in the Walking Dead universe. I mean you only have to google the phrase Morales fanfiction and you'll find many attempts at filling in the gaps of his story arc conjured up by dedicated fans. Juan Pereira, the actor who plays Morales, is also responsible for much of the fanfare himself as he can be seen making references to the fact that Morales is still alive on his social media accounts years before his actual reappearance on the show. 
He's been stirring the pot for quite some time, and the loyal Morales fans have been feeding off his dribs and drabs for years, attempting to work out what really happened to his character. As mentioned previously, Morales did return this season on The Walking Dead. I found that seeing him once again was pretty cool, however as I mentioned in my review at the time, I was annoyed that he was killed so quickly, as in my mind there was potential for an interesting story arc to develop. But although that I'm sure that his random reintroduction followed by his swift death may have a negative effect on some of his most loyal followers, there still exists plenty of fan fiction and theories relating to what actually happened between Morales leaving Rick and him joining the Saviors. Morales undoubtedly will remain a cult favourite character because of the mystery that surrounds him, and although some of the questions have been answered this season, there still exist a lot of details we don't know, which his loyal fanbase will continue to discuss and speculate about into the foreseeable future. Dale is one of those characters who if I'm being honest I'm not entirely sure about. When I first watched through The Walking Dead I liked him quite a lot, however on second viewing he really had a tendency to just get on my nerves. Although as you can probably work out I'm not his biggest fan, I do still appreciate that he does seem to be very popular with a huge portion of the Walking Dead fanbase. And even though he isn't my cup of tea, I can understand why he's still held in such high regard. Dale could be described as the moral compass of the group, and whilst everyone else was giving in to their animal instincts as the world collapsed around them, Dale didn't let the changing world change who he was. You could argue that this actually isn't a good thing, as in order to survive in the world of The Walking Dead, one does need to adapt to the ensuing chaos. However, there is definitely something admirable to be said of a man who can hold onto his morals and beliefs even during the darkest of times. Furthermore, even though I did find Dale's overly optimistic outlook and everything to be pretty naive in hindsight, there were actually times when I did find myself agreeing with what he said. For instance, I completely respect the stance he took on the Randall situation during the show's second season, and I actually found myself leaning to his side of the argument more so than the rest of the group. Perhaps then you could also accuse me of being naive, but I didn't really think that Randall was much of a threat, and I didn't really see the point of Rick and Herschel saving him only just to kill him anyway. The Walking Dead has had its fair share of pacifists and those who believed in peace since Dale left the show. However, I would argue that Dale was probably the most consistent of them all in regards to his beliefs. Like I said, Dale is by no means one of my favourite characters on The Walking Dead, however I can understand why so many fans are fond of him. Despite only appearing in two and a bit seasons of the show, and not having an awful lot of dialogue during this run, you'd be really hard pressed to find many Walking Dead fans who dislike Theodore Douglas, or as he likes to be known as, T-Dog. I've seen many comments on videos I've made ranking characters in the franchise, with some even saying he was one of their favourite Walking Dead cast members. Although personally I wouldn't go that far, I did think he was a decent character, and when he did get a chance to speak up or do something, he usually pulled it off pretty well. I'm sure everyone remembers him accidentally dropping Merle's keys down the drain on the city rooftop. Also, how can you forget the almost fourth wall breaking scene in which he confided in Dale that he was going to die, because that's what happens to black guys in horror fiction. And finally, I still remember his heroic sacrifice in which he saved Carol during the prison arc, with him ending up being devoured by a pair of walkers. For a character who didn't get a huge amount of moments, the moments he did have weren't half bad at all. Furthermore, like the previously mentioned Morales, there's a lot of potential what-ifs surrounding T-Dog that make him an interesting subject of discussion for fans. It's a well-known fact originally that T-Dog wasn't supposed to die during the prison arc. In fact, originally Carol was supposed to die with T-Dog being the one who survived. I can't help but wonder how much of a presence T-Dog would have on The Walking Dead if he remained on the show. I mean, when you think back to the first three seasons of the show, I would definitely class Carol as a B-tier character. To be honest, she didn't really do anything of note during the initial season, and in season two she spent most of her time crying over Sophia in Dale's RV. And finally, in season three, she was more of a hindrance to the group than a help as she kept nearly getting herself killed. It wasn't really until season 4 onward that her character transformed into one of the main stars of the show. So what's to say the same transformation wouldn't have befallen T-Dog if he had lived on instead of Carol? Although I believe this is an important factor in why T-Dog is so popular, Ione Singleton must also take a lot of credit himself. Like the first entry on this list, Daniel Newman, Ione seems to relish the role he played as T-Dog, and from my own personal experiences he really goes out of his way for the fans. When I went to Walker Stalker last year in London, he also attended. Now not only was he a hell of a lot cheaper to meet than everyone else at the event, he also seemed willing to give a lot more of his time to those visitors who had come to see him. 
Whereas a lot of the more popular actors and actresses just blast through meet and greets like it's a factory production line, Ione could be seen talking to fans for 5-10 to 10 minutes each, and I respect that a lot. Of course, I get that the likes of Norman Reedus and Andrew Lincoln can't spend 5-10 to 10 minutes with every person, simply due to the crazy number of people who want to see them, but you've still got to hand it to Ione. He does really seem to make an effort for those who are a fan of his character, and that's why for me he gets the number one spot on this list. So there you have it, that's my top 5 favourite Cult Walking Dead characters. I should say there were a few characters who I was thinking about adding to this list who didn't make it. Eastman is one who I know a lot of people like despite him making only one appearance, but if I'm brutally honest I didn't really know what to say about him so that's why I left him out. I did also consider including Noah as I liked his character, however I'm not really sure I would describe him as a cult favourite. I was also thinking of including Jesse, but everyone knows by now how much of a fan I am of her character, and I don't really think anyone wants to hear me talking about her yet again so that's why I left her out this time. Anyway, please let me know your thoughts below and tell me if there's anyone else you think I might have missed. As always, thank you very much for watching and until next time, goodbye.